Hello everybody, Griff here again. Today we are gonna look at a way we can make some appealing eye shapes uh, with very little trouble, and we'll be doing this in Photoshop. You can use these eye shapes uh, across all of your character animator puppets, and you can even bake out an eye puppet which you can import into any puppet you want. So let's just dive right in. All right, here's the eyes all hooked up and running in Character Animator. This is what we're going to make. As you can see, we can press one and we can change this to like some angry eyes. We got some happy eyes. We got our sad eyes. And of course, just the default eye shapes. The blinks are already hooked up and uh, everything is working as expected. So let's take a look at the Photoshop file uh, so we can sort of break down how this was put together. Here we are inside of Photoshop. We've got our eye document open here, and you can see I got a couple pairs of eyes. We are gonna be using masks in Character Animator to mask out all this extra art that we don't wanna see. So let's just take a look here at the uh, layer order. Uh, so you see I have a head layer, and this is just so I could get this working in Character Animator. We have our left eye, and our right eye, I mark those both with a plus so that we uh, will have these as independent. We just dive into the left eye. We have what we call a eye over and an eye masks layer, as well as all of my eye stuff. So if we hide the eye stuff and the eye masks, you'll see the eye over is really nothing but the line work that we're gonna use for our eyes. Inside of here, I have a shape for default, over, angry, happy, and sad. If we uh, minimize this and we open up our eye masks, you will see I have the same thing. And these are the exact same shapes as the line work, uh, but it's just the fill and not the line. But each one corresponds to the next. Now, if we open up our eye stuff and we dive into here, we'll see here I made this group I called inner eye. Now, the reason I did this is you'll get a little bit of trouble uh, with the blinks and that it'll want to show uh, the masks unless you nest it inside of this inner eye layer. Uh, you can call this whatever you like. I tend to use sort of generic names for sub layers. That way, if I want to just duplicate over from the left to the right, I can do that and I don't have to worry about all this extra naming garbage of left and right uh, prefixes in here. So inside of the inner eye, we have our blink, our eyelid bottom, our eyelid top. Also note when you're looking at this layer structure that I did keep the pupil outside of the inner eye group. And the reason I do that is the blink, when it triggers, will uh, hide everything else inside of this group. There is an option to turn it off, and I might be missing something here. Uh, please let me know if I am. Um, but I turn that off and, and it still hides the pupil when I keep it inside of this layer. So I just keep it on the outside of that layer and I have no problems here. Uh, the blink, if we dive inside of there, has got multiple blink layers, which we can hook up to uh, cycle layers behavior inside of Character Animator to get a nice smooth blink. This is of course completely optional. And a lot of times if I'm using eyelids, I won't do this uh, because with this method, your eyelids are gonna have a huge range of motion. And so you don't really need uh, to have that sort of the, the transitional blink shapes. Okay, so you'll see our left eyelid bottom is just this really huge uh, sort of square. And we'll just go ahead and hide our blinks here. And our eyelid top is the same thing, kind of like a big rectangle here. Our pupil is just a little black dot. Now I also have a left eyeball, which if we hide the eye color layer, you see is much smaller. And that's just gonna limit the pupil range uh, to an area that I like. And I actually think I might end up uh, just adjusting these just a little bit to get them more uh, centered. All right, so let's look at the why and how I set up my eye like this. First of all, I like a really large range with my eyelids. And so by using these masks, I'm gonna be able to use these enormous eyelid shapes, which means my range can be really, really huge. Uh, the other reason I like this is it kind of gives me um, just a really clean look in the end of it in that nothing inside of this inner eye is ever going to go outside of what I've defined as my mask shape. So the eyelids, the blinks, the pupil will all be masked out inside of Character Animator. So let's go ahead and make a new set here. So we see we have my eye masks and we're just gonna go ahead and hide this inner eye stuff. Uh, we're gonna hide our eye color. 
There we go. So here's our masks. And if we just look at the default shape here, I can take this default shape, I can duplicate it. And let's say I wanted to make, oh, what sounds good? Maybe like a nice shock shape so my character can be shocked. I can now hide this default layer and I can take this and since it's all uh, made out of shapes, I can just edit this shape. I can take this and really pop it up like this. So he has this um, huge wide open eye. Now, if you need more room, if you find yourself needing more, like you need more white behind your eye, it's no problem. All you have to do is edit this left eye color shape and you'll have everything you need. So now that I have my eye mask shocked, I can go ahead and duplicate that layer. And I'm just gonna call this um, eye over shock. There we go. And I can go ahead and drag that all the way up here into my eye over shapes. And this is a great method for doing this because you will always get exactly the same shape as your mask. And you want the mask and the line art to line up perfectly. This eye over shock shape selected, I'm gonna go ahead and set the fill to none. I'm gonna set the uh, line color to the same line color I'm using for everything else. Make sure the line width is the same as all of my other line over shapes. Great. So now we have a new shock shape. Uh, we can go ahead and just show all this stuff again. That way we make sure that uh, it's all visible inside of Character Animator. There's my eye masks. And uh, we'll go ahead and just repeat this for the right eye and then move into Character Animator. And one other thing I just really love about this is you can make any shape you want. You just want to make sure that your eyeball is going to, like this left eye color is going to be big enough. And you see here, it's not big enough to hit this shock shaped. But that's not a problem. I can just come in here. I can grab these, this line art here, and I can just edit it. I can make these, the white of these eyes really just as big as I want because they're never going to show up outside of the mask. And this is really cool. So you can make like any shape you want. You could make a, um, a heart or a star or just anything you can imagine there. And it's really easy to go ahead and edit this stuff uh, later. Okay, here we are back in Character Animator and you can see that our new shock shape is in there. The only problem we have right now is it's not hooked up to our triggers. So we'll just pop over here into the rigging panel. We have a swap set over here that I called Eye Emotion. And I'm just gonna go ahead and find my new shocked shapes and I'm gonna create a new trigger here. We're gonna call this uh, shock. There we go. And I like to organize these things usually into something. I'm gonna set this to number four uh, as the key bind on my keyboard. I'm gonna grab my uh, eye over shock for the left eye. I'm gonna grab the uh, eye uh, mask for the left eye. There's the shock there. We'll grab the shock from the right eye, both the mask and this over shape. I'm gonna drag those over into shock. We'll pop back into record. And there we go. So now we have this brand new shape that we can use. And you'll see my eyelids uh, need a little bit of editing. They just need to be bigger. That's not a big deal. We can just pop right back into Photoshop and edit that. Okay, so here we are back in Character Animator and you see everything here is working as expected. I can uh, now uh, cycle through these, have my angry, my happy, my sad, and the new shock shaped that we just created and you see the blink and everything else works just as expected. Fantastic. All right, thanks everybody I, so much for uh, watching. I hope this was helpful. If you like this content, please leave a like there down below. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as I will be doing regular character animator videos, uh, fun animations and lots of other odd things. Uh, you can also visit me on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday where I am doing character animator tutorials, working on collaborative projects, drawing people as Rick and Morty characters, all kinds of wonderful things. So please be sure to stop by and check me out there. Once again, thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next time.